Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where it's been a while. I know. What the hell is wrong with me? I was just bragging about how I I put out Paul Cash all the freaking time. Duh, 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 duh. And then like a whole week goes by and nothing comes out. WTF. I'll tell you. I was editing an episode and didn't like how it was coming out. Just nothing sounded good or right. So I added an addendum to the episode. That also did not sound right. I added a third addendum to the episode. And then afterwards, I'm like, if I have to keep coming in here and saying stuff to try to make what I said earlier make more sense, maybe the whole thing is fucked. And I just walked away. Yeah, so that's what I did. And that's where we are now. <clears throat> so I was in this weird funk where I was like... Like, I, I'm supposed to put a podcast up, but the podcast isn't done. And I was just fucking, like, latched on to this episode. Like a crazy person. And then finally, as soon as I said, well, I'm just not going to put it out. Then all of a sudden, like, this big relief came over me. And then I spent the last couple days going, oh, okay, well, now that I'm not going to do that episode, it kind of fucked my whole fucking shit up. But now what do I want to do? And that's where we are today. So I do have a few episodes coming up, like ideas to record and stuff. And I have some interviews coming up. If I could get those scheduled, um, that always seems to be the bitch. But um, yeah, so let me go make my coffee. Something came up. Well, let me, before we start doing the thing, let me catch you up on a few things here. So first off, my new EP, um, the third in the Goodbye Hope series, came out yesterday or the day before on all streaming platforms. So uh, Apple Music, YouTube, Spotify... Um, you can use the songs on Reels and Snapchats and TikToks and all the other things. Um, but it is called Dying to Live Through the Perfect Willingness to Die. And um, it is... It's four songs, but the first track, the two songs go into one another. So it's set up as one track. So it looks like there's only three songs, but there's really four. Whatever. Whatever. And um, for some reason, some of the platforms that have it up says that they're live. Like, this was a live recording. Which, it was a live recording, but it wasn't, like, in front of an audience. It was just me sitting right where I'm sitting now. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. And I um, finished the artwork for part four, the final part. Maybe I'll put that up right here and just show you guys what it looks like. Um... And that's been really fun doing the whole like, and it's so funny because like these songs were written in like 2000, 2001. So the idea for the covers, not what's on the covers necessarily, but like the color, that's always been the idea behind it. And so finally, all these years later, being able to actually see that progression, um, it's kind of surreal. Like, seeing something that is so silly that I was hanging my hat on for 23 fucking years, it's finally fucking done. Well, it's not done done, because I still have to record the last CP. But I think I might just do that. Um, next month just to get it over with so I could like work on another project because this whole thing has taken way too long to do so whatever Bloodshed Review issue 3 out now with poems from Jeff Taylor, Adam Crawford and Tamara Albana and not only that but Jeff's center section chat book is called The Shit Brick Paradox 
And he actually, you know what? Let me see. I'm going to fucking do this. Because his explanation of it was way better than mine. So let me find his post. Okay, so he says, A group of political poems sandwiched between two poems that are actually more like one poem that can time travel. Why didn't he send me that little bio before? That would have been great to like put on shit. Um, but that's that's amazing. So a group of political poems sandwiched between two poems that are actually more like one poem that can time travel. Fucking brilliant, dude. Fucking brilliant. So yeah, so the shit brick paradox is his center section chat book in here. And that's um, oh actually let me talk about the artwork on the cover too. So this right here, this is um, a charcoal drawing by um, Curtis, I don't want to mispronounce, okay, Curtis Botham out of Nova Scotia, Canada. And the piece is called Coal Mine Stellarton. So that's that right there. It's really good. It looks like a fucking photograph. It's fucking crazy. So that's that. And then this is my ink painting called People Watching Him Throw Up. So there you go. And if you want to see what it looks like when it's not there, it's right here. <laughs> so yeah, so that's that. And then also in this issue, we have Adam Crawford. We got four poems from Adam Crawford. We got um, four poems from Tamara Albana. And then um, in the middle, you could just pop this out, is Blood Rag issue 14 that has poems from Alice Allen from Poetry Says, Garrett Carroll, Stephen Bruce, Michael Lee Johnson, Brian Bruce, bookish from Booktube, um, Michael Centrone, Jason White, which is from Jason's Weird Reads on YouTube, and me. And then on the back of that is... Um, Bunny Wilde's um, Blood Rag Poet of the Year um, rag. So, and that has eight new poems by Bunny. And so it's funny because, like, this issue, like, you have an awesome chapbook from Jeff. You have four poems from Adam, four poems from Tamara. And then you have Bunny's eight poems. And then you get eight more poems from different people. <clears throat> so this is a fucking banga of an issue. So that is available right now on my Etsy shop. And next week, uh, my new chapbook on the beach will be out. So... Um, and that's interesting because that's the one I wrote during that uh, doing that um, chat book in an hour thing I do where I okay you're, you're gonna be okay get ready write a chat book in an hour but um, I used that technique and I did a video on it and like did the live thing where I'm typing and whatever you guys know what I'm fucking talking about Jesus Christ Oh, yeah. And then the other thing I wanted to say is today, actually, um, this day, which is Sunday, August 13th, the interview I did, or I guess one part of the interview I did with Andrew Whitset Heavy Board went up today. So I'm pretty sure Heavy Board is available everywhere and even more places than everywhere where you could get podcasts. But it's also up on YouTube. So if you're into that, we had a really, really good talk. And a lot of what we talked about is what inspired this episode that you're going to hear right now. But you're going to have to wait because I have to put a pizza in the oven now. So here we is. So on with the show. All right. So what we're going to be talking about today is what else do you do? Okay. And this is a really big fucking thing because some people out there, and I think a lot of you guys out there, feel like if you're going to make it as an author, 
you know, like that needs to be the thing you're going to do. If you're going to make it as a poet, that's what you have to do. You know, sell your poetry and that's it. You know, if you are someone who went to university and went through an MFA program, you know, you're waiting for your big fucking book deal, you know, and that's it. And that's how you know if you made it. And I'm here to tell you that making it is all a mental thing. Like, anybody can make it. Because everyone's vision of what making it is, is going to be completely subjective. Okay? So some of you might go, oh, well, I know I really made it when I could buy a new house. Or I drive a sports car. And then others might be, oh, man... I'm going to know I made it when I can quit my day job. Or others might be, I'm going to know I made it, like Alice Allen said. Like, she would take her friends out for, like, coffee with her poetry money. You know? Like, that was how Alice knew she made it. I don't know if Alice ever said she knew she made it from that, but that was, like, a thing she did, you know? So you have to, first off... Before you fucking do another thing. Before you write another fucking line. If this is something that you actually want to do. And you want this to be your career. The first thing you have to ask yourself is. What will it take for me to say I made it? What is that to you? Because it's going to be different for every single one of you. So... Rule number one, figure out what the fuck you're fighting for. Like, what does it mean to make it? <clears throat> Once we got that out of the way, if you want to be, like, hardcore about this and really look at this as a business, then you have to say, how much money do I need to actually make every month to be able to get to that thing? Okay. So, figure out whatever the fuck that number is. Then, once you've figured out that number, now look and say, okay, how many books do I have to sell to get here? And this is whether or not you're talking about self-publishing or, like, doing chapbooks or um, even if you're a traditionally published author who gets a royalty, like, whatever the number you've come up with, which will make you say that you've made it, how many books do you need to sell a month to get there? Write that down. Figure it out. Do the math. Push pause. I'll, I'll wait. It's fine. Now, once you have that number that is either going to scare the shit out of you or have you go, oh, that's a lot less than I thought it was going to be. Whatever the fucking situation is that you're having with yourself right now. Now, you have to figure out how to do that thing. Okay? And this is a lot smaller. Okay? So, instead of now saying, I have to fucking be able to buy that house. Now you're saying, I have to sell 300 books this month. And that is a lot easier to wrap your head around, wrap your hands around, just easier to fucking do than the great giant fucking colossal fucking mountain of buying a fucking house. Okay? Cuz that's all you have to do. You just have to sell 300 bucks or 100 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever the fuck it is that you've come up with. Now, <clears throat> depending on how often you release that might be kind of difficult to keep that number going. But if you have something that people are really into, you should always be able to sell old titles and build new readers. Okay, That's the beauty of being an author or being a poet or being someone in the arts, especially when it's something that can be reproduced. Because then it's just residual income. Okay? I have to take my glasses off because for some reason when I have my headphones on it like pushes my glasses like off my head 
and I was like getting like all like blurry looking at the fucking thing because the lenses were a little too far away. All right. So now that we figured all this shit out, and now you know exactly how many books you need to sell to to make it. Okay. Now we got to look at ancillary income. Okay. Now we got to think of what are the other things. Okay. What else can you do? Okay. So like for me, I do all sorts of different things. And like I talked about it on the podcast um, with Andrew. I talked about it on the podcast with Alice. And I think I even talked about it on the podcast with Bucks. But you do different things. Like I do my YouTube channel. I do Anarchy Crew. I do this podcast. I do affiliate links. I do Google AdSense. I do um, book covers for people. Um, I paint. I sell art. I run Poetic Anarchy Press. I uh, do... Oh, I have music. Okay? I do all sorts of shit. I have, like... They're gonna dry up. I'm sure. But, like, my film royalties. Okay? So, knowing that there are all these things you can do. Like, are you a good editor? Like, can you, like... Like, proofread the fuck out of something? Can you read something and know where something is lacking and where something could be made better like if you know how to do that like look into like editing other people's stuff if you enjoy doing that don't do it if you're not going to like doing it okay because we're we're trying to make sure that you can make it because I'm not going to lie there will be months where your book sales aren't very good and if you don't have a bunch of ancillary shit coming up your rear that month is going to be very fucking hard please understand the words that are coming out of my mouth like I'm speaking from experience people like you need to have a bunch of little fucking things that you could just like latch on to when um when, when you need to tighten your belt a little bit. And I was bringing this up because um, I try to look at things in like micro vision kind of thing. So I know what I need to do for the month. I know what I strive for for the month. But I also look at it per week. And sometimes I get even like more in-depth and do per day. And the first week of August was rough. And it wasn't just rough in one category. It was rough across the board. So to get into this, okay, what we need to ask ourselves is what is it, can, what is it that we can offer other people? Okay. Is there anything that you know how to do that you know other people don't like to do? Like, can you do accounting? Can you make book covers? Can you format ebooks or print books? Can you do um, social media marketing? You know, can you run an email list? any of these things like if you can do any of these things and enjoy the fact that you're doing it that could really fucking help like affiliate marketing is huge like whether you do it through um, Amazon Associates or through AdSense or through um, any other kind of website that offers affiliate marketing Like, that is a really good way to bolster your income, okay? And honestly, if you have a bunch of shit you want to sell to, like, just, like, look around your house, like, fucking eBay and, like, Facebook Marketplace, as cringy as that is, 
those are like eBay is not nearly as good as it used to be because I think a lot of people are just selling stuff on Instagram now and um, on Etsy as well if it's vintage. So uh, definitely look into doing stuff like that. But when you do all this stuff and you open up your life to where like some some people might be going, but God, that sounds like a lot of fucking work. That sounds like you're working all fucking day. No shit. Yes, I'm working all fucking day. But on top of that, I'm not having my soul sucked. Okay? Like, when I worked in an office or at a place, I felt like my soul was leaving my body. And then I would get home, and it would take me hours to recharge enough to be able to start doing the art stuff. Whereas if you do all of these things, and yes, you're working all day, but you know what else you're doing? You're fucking taking breaks whenever the fuck you want. And it doesn't have to be like, you don't have someone like fucking looking over your shoulder, like ready to scold you. You know, and if you're one of those people who need that thing, just always go, oh, well, the rent will be due on the first. So let that be the fucking scolding motherfucker. But it's just, it's... I think people get this idea in their head that if you're going to be a writer, you have to be a writer, and that's it. You know, I mean, there's a ton of people who've gone to fucking university, got degrees, doing the whole thing, and yes, they write books, but they also are journalists, or they write articles for websites, or they have a sub stack, or they fucking teach. Like, people who get MFAs and go on to become famous authors or famous poets, they are usually, that's just like the fun extra thing they get to do, but their real money is coming from teaching or grants. (laughs) Oh man, this is really difficult with these headphones on with my glasses right now. I'm getting all dizzy. Maybe the computer's just too far away. I don't fucking know. Anyway, so these are the things that you need to look into doing. And try to figure out what is the thing that you can do to supplement your writing. Because eventually, hopefully, you'll get to a point where you don't have to do the other stuff. But especially stuff you could put on autopilot, like affiliate links. Now, I will say back up with your affiliate links you can't just put them up and forget them because a lot of times the places you're doing affiliate shit through change their things and when they do that they kill your links and um there was like this one three month period where i didn't make any money off affiliate links and i thought like i I was like fucking so mad And then I checked, and they're like, oh, yeah, we've changed our terms of service and how we do our links now. So any links that you had, now you have to do it like this. And I think a lot of the reason why they do that is because if, like, they're getting a lot of traffic from old-ass links and having to pay motherfuckers out for that, the whole point of having affiliate links to be able to fucking drive traffic to your site I think sometimes they think that that's too much. So don't just set them and forget them, but set them, walk away for a long time, and then set a reminder to come back and look at them. Boom. Sorted. We're figuring this shit out. Okay. So just know that being a writer who's made it, a lot of times that means you're a writer, but you also do a lot of other shit. You know? And that's why I think it's so important for, like, especially, like, in college and shit like that. If anyone is going to major in the arts, they need to minor in business or have business be a big part of their art education. Because all these people are being trained in how to be creative, which they already fucking are. But then they're thrown out into the world with no fucking business sense at all. And what's the fucking point in that? You know, and I know a lot of you were like, well, I want to go more of the traditional route. Fine. Do you? I don't give a shit. Okay. But I'm just telling you, it will be easier even for you if you are an amazing promo. 
Like, if you can fucking sell people into whatever the fuck it is you're doing. Because all that's going to do is sell you more books. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. <sighs> so, with that said, I guess we are going to start plugging some butts. Here we are with the butt plugs yet again. Be sure to go over and pick up Bloodshed Review number three with poems from Adam Crawford, Tamara Albana, and a center section chat book by Jeff Taylor called The Shit Brick Paradox. It's on Etsy. Pick up my latest chat book, Drinking Less, which is not sitting here, and um, be on the lookout for On the Beach this month's chat book by yours truly. Pick up the blood rag, or you could get the blood rag for free in the Bloodshed Review. Also, also, if you haven't got it yet, pick up Project Broadside. It's got a bunch of beautiful broadsides in it that are fantastic. And pretty soon, I will get the right size envelopes so I can ship those. Because that's something that I just realized right now that I still haven't done. Oh. I need to make notes and then just stick them on things so I can see them daily. That is going to be the plan for this week. Notes. Do you take notes and leave notes? Notes. Okay, we have one minute before my oven pizza is done. So let's get into those motherfucking shout outs. So I want to give a big thank you to all you beautiful, sexy fuckers over there on Patreon. Michael, Cedar, Harry, Monse. You guys are the things dreams are made of. And then over there in the YouTube thank you crew, I want to give a big thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, to Julia, and to Lauren. You guys are the apple of my eye. And then over there in the Anarchy Crew, where everyone swings hard and low, we have Bunny, Nate, Mindy, Thomas, Tim, J, Shaylin, Tim, G, Chill Baby, Tamara, Adam, Chase, JH, Jessica, Jason, and Jeff, you guys make me smile and feel warm in my nethers. And then the biggest of all the biggest thank yous in the world, you know who I'm talking about. It goes to the number one chappy over there in the chat book of the month club, Caitlin. Thank you. So I want to... Um, let you guys all know that you guys are the shit. And Caitlin, I will be sending your copy of Bloodshed Review and On the Beach next week once On the Beach is done. And um, Caitlin also sent me a really cool article. It's actually a Reddit post that I'm going to be doing a podcast episode of on next. So the next podcast you hear will probably be that. So with that said, everybody, you know the fucking drill Keep buying our books, type hard, and I will talk to you all later. I think I even missed the camera there. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.